What's up guys, it's your boy Fozzy, and today I'm finally bringing you a charge blade build that I've been working on for like two weeks now. I've been working really hard to get this build because honestly I want something to use other than just the Diablo Tyrannus all the freaking time. And I've finally made a build with the Lunasha charge blade at 95% affinity. And I absolutely love this thing. I'm going to head over to the training area, break it down, and demonstrate and show you why this thing is so fun. And I believe it outproves the Diablos Tyrannus. See you guys over there. Now that we're back in the training area, I'm going to break this build down and show you why I think that this charge blade is low-key the best charge blade in the game. That's right, better than the Diablos Tyrannus. All right. Now this is a crit build. I know you guys are probably saying, why crit build with charge blade? Crit build with charge blade is useless. You should be going for super amp discharge as much as possible, right? That's that's best damn that's, that's right to an extent, right? But you're only able to super amp discharge so often. You're only able to discharge at very short windows of opportunity, right? That's why I love this build. You still get that full potential of DPS from the super amp discharge. But you're still getting all the damage plus 85 percent affinity off the sword play we're using the empress alma rare t8 sword 648 raw attack 10 percent affinity 210 blast white sharpness and two level three decoration slots best part about it razor sharp automatically on the charge blade the only downside to this charge blade is the raw is a little bit weaker than most other charge blades but besides that it is amazing and honestly to have 210 blasts for a little bit less raw to get that 100 flat proc every time blast does go off I think makes up more than enough for it right we're using the Nergonti Helm A level 1 decoration slot 2 points of maximum might 1 point attack boost Kolv Taroth A chest piece to get that level 1 decoration slot Two points in stun resistance, two points in critical boost. Destinch Grip B, two points in focus, two level one decoration slots. The Nergante Coil B, two points in attack and a level two decoration slot. And for the legs, Dante's Leather Boots, two level one decoration slots, weakness exploit two. And we're rocking artillery charm. Because unfortunately, I'm not lucky enough to get a single artillery gem. For the love of God, please give me one. But even if I did have them, honestly, I don't think I can make this build much better because it is a crit-based build. And I will explain and demonstrate why I think the crit-based build for Charge Blade is honestly very powerful, very strong. Being able to consistently, very consistently crit with the Charge Blade, constantly being able to build up that focus for the Super Amp Discharge and... Your sword play has insane amount of damage. I, I, oh god, I just love this. I love this, this build, this charge blade. I think it's way more funner than the Diablo's Tyrannus. Not only is it funner, it does hit harder. The Super Amp Discharge is like a hundred points less, but besides that, it is better in every way. I will do a demonstration to show you the damage value on both because I don't want to just tell you numbers you would always get bored with this video but for right now let's look at the equipment skills look at the gems that I have slotted in and then I will demonstrate each each version and talk about it and the version by the way real quick that I'm going to be demonstrating for my Diablos Tyrannus is the video that I made over the Diablos Tyrannus I'm gonna be using that build to do a damage comparison and if you haven't seen the video I'll leave a link in the top right corner so you can check it out but honestly I am super impressed with this charge blade to be able to out DPS sword play and almost out DPS super M discharge play because the Diablos Tyrannus is mine is augmented with a attack boost and a health augmentation and on top of that it has over 
200 points of more raw than this charge blade but you can't forget about that white sharpness that white sharpness gives you 2.5% flat increase to damage but anyway look at the equip skills we have attack level 5 attack level 5 isn't mandatory attack level 4 is mandatory because we have to get that plus 5% affinity now if you look attack level 1, attack level 2, attack level 3 no affinity, attack level 4 plus 5 affinity that's where you want your attack level to at least be at I had an extra attack gem so I figured why the hell not throw an attack gem in there right critical boost level 3 now with 85% affinity you're going to be critting pretty consistently right like very consistently now the the big argument why crit charge blade is not that strong although I have ran the numbers countless times and it is very strong is because the crit doesn't increase your super amp discharge that is very true but it increases everything else you're doing everything else you're doing to build up to that super amp discharge why would you not want to increase all the damage instead of just one thing one thing super amp discharge that's super easy to miss with right so you have very short windows opportunity on almost every monster in this game because of how the AIs work and if you miss that then your strongest move that you have put your entire build towards is useless you're practically not doing the, the DPS you should be doing because you're missing now if you aren't missing and stuff then that's that's great you know you're doing consistent damage with a charge like you're supposed to but I'm telling you in the long run having the sword play stronger on top of the elemental discharge is better all around critical boost level 3 Increase damage dealt by critical hits to 40%. With an 85% affinity, right, you are going to be wanting to have this to increase those critical hits a lot. Witness Exploit Level 3. Witness Exploit Level 3 means when you hit a weak spot, you're going to have 50% increased affinity, right? Whenever you're attack when you're fighting a monster you should be attacking the weak points anyway there's no reason why you should not be because when you're attacking weak points you're maximizing the DPS that your weapon can perform right so whenever you hit a weak spot not only do you have that 35% affinity sitting on the side but when you do it you're going to get an additional 50 on top of that that's how we're getting our 85% affinity and you are going to be critting every time and when you are critting with critical boost level 3 you're getting a 40% increase to damage that means your sword play is very very strong to level 3 now this ain't all about sword play we are still very worried about maximizing our super amp discharge and by doing that our to level 3 increases the foul damage by 30% you must have this for every charge blade basically unless you're using Elemental charge blades and these don't say impact file on the file top. They say power elemental file You should be using this if it says power elemental file do not use the artillery Because it does not increase your super amp discharge damage Just a little tip for anybody who doesn't know that Stun resistance reduces the duration of stun by 60% Now the only reason that this is actually in here is because in order to get the two points in critical boost that I needed from the chest piece, this was with it. And honestly, it's not a bad little bonus. Having reduced by over half stun duration is, is very nice. It comes in very handy. Recovery up level two, I have a health augmentation on this charge blade, so having the recovery, increasing your health regain by 20% when you're attacking means less time you have to put away your weapon to heal, which in turn means more uptime. More uptime means more DPS. I'm Sure, that's the reason why you're probably here looking at this video is for DPS, right? Now, focus level two. Focus level two is insanely good. It is very strong for charge blades, especially to increase your gauge fill rate by 10. And if you can get to level three by 20%, that means you're increasing your files by 10 to 20%, right? Now, you know how I said we're not only worried about sword play we are still worried about our super amp discharge this is this is another part of it
being able to fill your files faster, which means you're able to super amp discharge more often, which means more DPS. And not only are you able to super amp discharge more often because of this, but you're able to keep your shield stored with energy longer and more often because you're able to fill files easier and more often. If you are using a charge blade and you are not using focus, for the love of God, please put focus on your charge blade. I promise you, you will love it and you will never want to use charge blade again without using it. I know I sure don't. Moving on to speed sharpening level 2. Speed sharpening level 2 I felt like was more than enough for especially this specific charge blade because this specific charge blade has razor sharp on it which halves sharpness loss. That means when you're attacking a monster and you're hitting them over and over and over and stuff, your sharpness gauge, it halves the loss it has your durability bar, which is very useful because it means you're able to keep that wipe sharpness a time and a half longer. I love it. It's insanely useful. And with speed sharpening level 2, you're pretty much able to consistently always keep a wipe sharpness. You don't have to have handicraft. You don't have to have protect polish. You don't have to have any of that stuff to use up more gem slots. It's so, so good and so useful. And... I mean, if you wanted to have speed sharpening level 3 just because you want it, you could drop a recovery up gem if you wanted, honestly, and do it. Or you could drop an attack boost gem and put it in. But I don't really think you'd want to drop a recovery up or an attack boost just for a speed sharpening to level 3. Because speed sharpening level 2, I'm telling you, is more than enough. You're never going to run into an occasion, I don't think I have yet, where you're fighting a monster, you dip into your blue sharpness, and you're like, oh. You know, usually the monster will leave the area by the time you get ready to lose your white sharpness. And even if you do dip into the blue, just walk away, sharpen it real quick, right back up, white sharpness, you're good. Maximum Might Level 2. Now the reason Maximum Might Level 2 is so, so, so great and also really bad at the same time is because Maximum Might is amazing on certain weapons and it's awful on other weapons. Thankfully, Charge Blade is one of those weapons that it's very dominant in. Because with Charge Blade, you're never using stamina. If you are using stamina, I can guarantee you it's probably one of two things. You're either using it to roll, to, uh, to roll out of a monster's incoming attack, or to chase a monster down. Besides that, I don't think there's any moves you do with a Charge Blade that actually consumes stamina. So, you're always going to be at max stamina with the charge blade and getting 20% affinity just for always being at max stamina it's too good to pass up and if I could squeeze in level 3 for 30% I probably would you don't really need to because you're already at 85% affinity 95% affinity is just kind of overkill but why not right I mean honestly and for the last we got capacity boost capacity boost is pretty much mandatory on any charge blade on any gun lance you have to have it it increases your file capacity by one and it's just more damage on the super amp discharge it's keeping your shield energy stored longer because each file I'm pretty sure keeps it 30 seconds or it gives you 30 seconds per file you store into it so it's just way too good all around to not have you have to have this and if we look at our gems real quick and I'll show you the decorations I have in it we have a magazine and a critical jewel on the charge blade we have Nergigante's helm we have an attack jewel on the chest piece we have a medicine jewel on the arms we have attack and another medicine jewel on the coil we have a tenderizer jewel for weakness exploit and on the legs we have two grinder jewels that is the setup that we are running and I absolutely love this I think it's very strong I have done the number comparison and I will talk over and demonstrate in the background this exact build with the Diablo Tyrannus build that I did in a video a little while back and if you haven't seen it I'll leave a link in the top right corner to demonstrate to so you can go back and check it out make sure you check it out if you haven't seen that video but this Lunasha charge blade not only is super strong super good super useful in every way but it is it is more dominant than the Diablos Tyrannus. Now the reason <clears throat> that I say it's more dominant than the Diablos Tyrannus is if you look at the background right now, what I have playing, I'm doing comparison 
of the Diablo Tyrannus build that I did, like I said, of the build I just showed you, and you can see the numbers, they ain't lying. 288 Super Amp with 302 with the Diablo Tyrannus Super Amp Discharge, right? This is the Lunastra with a 340 and then a 356 Super Amp Discharge. The numbers prove the fact that the Lunastra Charge Blade is stronger. It is better. And a lot of people don't realize it because the raw is a lot less. But the white sharpness with the crit makes up for it. 212 right there with the Diablos. With the Lunastra, what do we hit for? 249. Whenever I did the number comparison, I didn't want to just tell you the numbers. I wanted to actually demonstrate and show you guys that this build is stronger than Diablos Tyrannus.